All right, everybody. So this is a channel you guys have asked me to cover for quite some time now. And I've kind of put it off for the most part because upon taking a brief look at some of their videos, it very quickly became apparent to me what kind of content they make. Because there's a few different types of conservative content online. There's the kind that is argumentative, that genuinely does attempt to push conservative politics with arguments and like propagandistic points. And then there's this like really low effort grift content that's so badly made, so poorly argumented, and like fails so badly at dog whistling um, at so many points that it's just fun to pick apart and talking about your quartering types. And then you've got the very low tier conservative content. The stuff that neither attempts to make much of an argument nor really fails at it at doing so enough that it's funny but is simply just meant to be a podcast or news coverage derisively covering anything remotely left-wing. And usually the stories are based on some false lie of a premise or something, but most commonly, the most spicy thing about their videos, the only thing I find worth commenting on about them, are their thumbnails. In fact, the most interesting trend when it comes to their thumbnails is this one the cancel pigs trend. Now, as you all know, conservatives have been big lovers of AI. They love stealing things. They don't care about art. So obviously the soullessness of it is, is apparent. And it's also a great tool for making this really low effort, cringe, like uh, AI generated art for their thumbnails. And so they started this trend or tried to start this trend of calling the left cancel pigs and then making these AI generated pig people with like glasses and blue hair and like pride flags and stuff like that. Like, ah, yes, this is what the left looks like. They're pigs, gay pigs. Ah, you know, oh, salty as bacon, right? And so basically the whole idea behind it is just like, oh, we're presenting the left as like uh, triggered, ugly, fat, yada, yada, yada. Nothing new. We've covered conservative types that do this before, but there really isn't much of an argument to any of it. Though I will say, I guess the pig aspect of it started to get old and they realized it wasn't going anywhere because now they've switched it up from being pigs to being these like AI generated woke people that I guess are supposed to look like they're out of a DreamWorks movie or like a Pixar movie, I think. Like, why is it like knockoff Pixar? Um, but now this is like their representation of, of like woke people now. Um, but this is Clownfish TV. Garbage content, but they put out a video recently you guys have been begging me to cover called Woke People Are More Unhappy and Depressed, Study Says. And uh, it, it, the, the description says, progressives tend to be more unhappy and agitated than their conservative counterparts, according to a new Finnish report. Now, this has actually been reported numerous times by many studies, but the fact is, overwhelmingly, the reason attributed for this has been that when it comes to left-wing people, the concept of mental health awareness is, one, far more widespread, so people are far more aware of, are they depressed? Are they unhappy? Are they feeling down? Like, they're far more capable of just analyzing that, because many people don't know when they're depressed or unhappy because they don't have a baseline to compare to. They're themselves. They can't, like, know what everybody else is feeling. They just assume everyone feels like this in many cases. And then, of course, the left is also far more in favor of pro-mental health uh, awareness, that kind of stuff, right? So if you're someone on the left or left-leaning, you're far more likely to report if you're feeling depressed or down than if you're on the right, because let's be honest, many people on the right consider even admitting to feeling depressed or down or unhappy or sad as being weakness. And being weak makes you less of a man, less base, less whatever the fuck, right? Their masculinity, their their pride is tied to the idea that they have an impenetrably unbreakable brain. Fact is all humans deal with like bouts of sadness and, and like chemical imbalances and lower serotonin and all these things. It's just scientifically true. 
Um, and the issue is that, A, women in particular, but mostly, like, mostly women tend to be progressive, but women are notably more socialized, like, trained to be better socialized when it comes to their emotions than men are in many areas. And this leads to women having far less problems with this kind of stuff, because they talk about it and they're open about it way more often. Um, but even on the left, there are much more men who, are, who will admit if they are down, sad, depressed, etc., because they don't see it as a point of shame, but they see it as something that they want to fix, they want to elevate themselves from that, and they want to find help for that, something that you can't do if you don't tell somebody and get help and talk about it and get therapy. Hell, the right are literally the people that are anti-therapy, you know? These, are, these people go on rants about how therapy is a scam and you shouldn't do therapy, and yet they're the ones claiming the left are the ones who are all depressed. Um, obviously the reason why progressives report this more is because they're willing to report it far less more than conservatives are. But I guess, uh, being left, being not racist makes you miserable, I guess. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. She is out and about today, but we're going to talk about woke people. Their term, not mine, on the New York Post. I saw this last night and I thought it was pretty funny, especially since... Their term, not mine, on the New York Post? Are you confusing the New York Post with the New York Times? The New York Post is a tabloid magazine that, like, doxes sex workers and gets them fired from their day jobs. The top, the top story there has, like, ass and pussy getting flashed at the camera in the thumbnail. And, and like, titties. Like... Is this a left-wing outlet? From my understanding, this is like a right-ish leaning, like shameless tabloid outlet. Their word, like the, the New York Post is woke now? Since we are talking about gaming journalists and activists sort of infiltrating Hollywood and uh, video games and comic books and animation, uh, that woke people are, again, quote unquote, woke people are more likely to be unhappy, anxious, and depressed, a new study suggests. I do think there is probably some level of merit to this as well, outside of simply the fact that left-wing people are far more likely to admit when they are depressed or sad or unhappy. Um, to be fair, the right fundamentally doesn't care about anything real, right? Like, for example, lo let's look at the recent death of Nex Benedict. Uh, for the record... Uh, Next, Benedict preferred he, him pronouns, but also went by they, them. I got a lot of people commenting, bitching about that in the comments of my post when I used, um, or I should say Ethan used he for next in the thumbnail. You can literally Google it. Next preferred he, him pronouns. Why the fuck would you take the time to leave a hate comment in my video replies calling me transphobic for using the correct pronouns because you don't care enough about this kid to Google what his preferred pronouns were? But you, but you have enough time to leave a hate comment on my post. Genuinely, genuinely insane shit. Genuinely insane shit. Regardless, though, um, it makes me think about how conservatives reacted to Next Benedict's death, right? Where they didn't care about it as a tragedy. None of them talked about Next in the sense that it was like, I feel sad that Next died. No one on the right was saying that. I never saw any posts like that. They were all saying Nex was a bully, Nex started a fight that they couldn't win, that kind of thing. And then, of course, they can't even do the dead child the justice of using the preferred pronouns that he wanted, which were he, him, or they, them. Instead, they use she, her pronouns, nonstop and without fail. They don't care about any, like, when they do talk about a serious topic like a dead child, they do not take it seriously. They clearly are not upset about a child having died. Uh, look at the Nashville shooting. They finally got a single instance in where somebody who wasn't a straight white man sh did a mass shooting, and it was a trans person. And now since then, every single shooter is a trans person until proven otherwise. You've noticed that, right? The immediate reaction from the right is every mass shooter or attacker or terrorist is a trans person until proven otherwise, or in many cases, they're still trans even after proven otherwise, and it's a conspiracy to cover it up. So, it's basically just these right-wing pundits and those that 
consume their content. They're focused on culture war nonsense about video game journalists infiltrating the gaming industry. Who the fuck is going to be depressed about the state of the world when they think the worst thing that hap that's happening is that woke video game journalists are infiltrating the gaming industry? Who the fuck is going to be depressed over that when that's what they think is going on in the world and that's bad? When instead, on the left right now, people are concerned about the tens of thousands of children being slaughtered in Gaza, the millions of people at threat of losing their homes, lives, and everything in Ukraine, the slavery that takes place all around the world to produce the products we consume on a daily basis, from the computer chips and our computers and phones to the cloth that's in the clothing on our backs. Like, these are the issues the left talks about, cares about, researches, and thinks about, and learns about all the time. And it's like, yeah, I think when you are constantly reminded of the fact that, and, and care about the fact and want to do something about the fact that there is insane amounts of injustice out there, object objectively speaking, okay? Children working in sweatshops, child slavery, um, fuck, genocide, murder, the, the, like, like all the apartheid. These things are objectively tragedies. I'm, I know many conservatives might disagree. Clownfish TV might disagree. But when you're a progressive, these are the things that you care about. These are the things you focus on. And the response from conservatives would be, well, yeah, you're cringe for focusing on those things. That's why you're depressed. You should stop caring, right? It's like, well, well, no. Just because bad things happening makes you sad doesn't mean you shouldn't care about it and you should ignore it. Not caring about it and ignoring it doesn't not only makes you a bad person, but kind of makes you a bit of a pussy, in my opinion. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I do think there's some merit to the idea that the left might be inherently a little sadder just because the left fundamentally actually cares about injustice and bad things happening in the world. While many conservative like content viewers do live in a sort of like ignorant bliss. Imagine that. Imagine that people who spend a good chunk of their time looking for things to be aggrieved about are unhappy. I like the way. Yeah, exactly. See, that's the way it's worded. Looking for things to be aggrieved about, caring about injustice in the world. And I, I and if you think that it's like cringe to care about child slavery and like genocide that has resulted in like tens of thousands of deaths in like Palestine or something. If you think it's cringe to care about that, that's like finding things to be offended about. Like you're you're just you're you're just kind of a monster. Like I, I, I don't really I actually don't know how to debate someone who is that willing to just disregard the human social convention. Like at that point, why not shit in the street and like piss on the table? Why not just like punch every person you walk past because who cares? Like like at that point you're you're basically just arguing why be human. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Uh, water is also wet, right? The sky is blue. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. I'm sorry, th this is like the peak of grift content online. Like there is not a hint of shame at all to these people's content. I believe this is like a married couple or like brother and sister, they might be both. Uh, that, that, uh, make content together, um, about, like, the woke evil or whatever. Take the plank out of your own eye. I don't know how many ways I can, I can say it. Just, you deal with you. You deal with your problems first, your own personal problems first, and then you can lecture everybody else on the internet. You know, when you- Okay. So, while they're, I, I'm just gonna skip around to see if we can happen to, like, very much like throwing a dart at a globe, we can land on something good, um, like an actual argument. This is an actual argument, and I'll actually engage with it, and I'll engage with it in good faith. I will agree, there are a lot of especially young, radically progressive people who do not have their life in order. And they spend too much time on the internet virtue signaling about the things they believe in, when what they really should be doing is focusing on their real life. And I've been guilty of this, too. I think everybody, to a degree, has been guilty of, like, doing something else that isn't productive when they should be doing something productive. But it really is just better to get up off your ass and do something productive. It could start as simply as, cleaning your room, bucko! Or, you know, doing a project you've been putting off, or even going out to a pride march or a protest and genuinely making your voice be heard, or getting out to fucking vote, you know? But so many people I've seen on the left almost take a pride 
and making it part of their identity that they are dysfunctional. Like that they cannot go through life like you're supposed to, like a normal person. They actually take pride in it. And it's not that they have like a disability that makes it like, okay, yeah, you, like you literally cannot go through life. It's they are literally normal people who have just decided to opt out of life and use progressivism and like this like weird twisting of what the left believes in as a justification for it. Like, no, I need to be on Twitter all day posting. That's why I can't go out and like make my life better. There is definitely a certain degree of like people on the left neglecting themselves to just be online and be in their little internet circle bubble uh, of sorts to, to back them up on their politics. I've noticed that being a massive trend. So I'll definitely agree that's a thing. But what something I've noticed as a, as a trend for these types of content creators is that it never attacks the ideas of the left, really. It's really hard to grapple with the ideals and morals of what the left believes in. For real, right? Like, they'll lie about the, what the left believes in, but they'll never actually tackle the fundamental beliefs on an honest level. So instead, they attack the morals, character, and oftentimes, most consistently, the appearance of those that disagree with them on the left. And, and that's just it, right? Like, just attack the people who believe in these ideas and make it seem like everybody who believes in these ideas is so bad that surely the ideas themselves are bad. That's why content like this is so frustrating to cover, because there's there's no point in, like, watching it as I would a traditional video, because it's not making any arguments. It's just sort of like, well, yeah, lefties are unhappy. Well, water is wet, right? Like, it's it's just kind of like him rambling a little bit under the presupposition that he is right and the left is wrong. You're like the hall monitor of the internet and people are sick of your shit. Trans women who compete with women in sports are not helping women's rights. Reverse score. Wait, what? Somebody call JK Rowling. We don't need to talk more about the color of people's skin. A white person cannot understand how a black person feels equally well as another black person. That probably is true. You know, you're, you got to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. I'm just saying, I'll, I'll give you that one. A member of a privileged group can adopt features or cultural elements of a less privileged group. Reverse scored. The gender divide was probably the most surprising. Oh my God, this is so fucking boring. Do, do people watch this shit? What are the comments like? The woke religion is not a happy club. When you play the victim all the time, you have no time to be happy. I got red-pilled in 2015. As angry as I am at the idiocy of the world, I'm nowhere near as strained as the perpetual victim of, victims of the left. I'm here playing my Xbox and eating cookies with a smile on my face while my enemies are wasting their lives in fruitless protests. That's why they want everyone else to be miserable as well. There is no need for a study to come to that conclusion. Miserable people want to spread their misery because they cannot stand others being happy. Therefore, they, wa they have to be miserable in the first place. Then you spend your days being angry and playing the victim. How could you possibly be happy? Woke people make me unhappy and depressed. Shocking that the most hateful kinds of people I've ever encountered are deeply miserable and unhappy. Famously, the left, hateful and uh, unkind. You would think that being obsessed with oppression would make them depressed. Or who would have thunk that being obsessed with oppression would make you depressed? Wait, they even admit it's an obsession with oppression. So they admit it's oppression? Is it just they have to derisively call it an obsession and that's why it's bad? The hair, the piercings, the mask, the obedience, they all fall into the same pattern. The consequences of the hive mind are devastating. It's so funny to me. They get mad at, like, woke people for, like, once again, um, they, they get so mad at, like, here, here is, I, I googled alt piercings SJW to find the most extreme example I could find, okay? So they would see a person like this and call this person part of a hive mind because of their appearance and the way they present themselves. How the fuck does that mean you're not part of a hive mind then? 
Because this person does this to buck society and do what they want and doesn't care what people think of their appearance. That's the whole point. Like, I am going against society's expectations, society's rules, boundaries, and uh, demands of how I look. How does that evoke being part of a hive mind, literally being individual, not caring what others think, but succumbing to what society expects of you and living in constant fear of being cringe and embarrassed of what others think of you, bucking to society's wills, how is that not being part of a hive mind? It's really frustrating to engage with this type of content and the people who view it because they are genuinely so far down they're they're down a different kind of rabbit hole than just getting more radicalized they're down the like disaffected rabbit hole to the point where they actually see it as a moral wrong to care and i think at that point you're just not really a person anymore like i i guess we've like you've agreed to canceling your subscription to the human social contract you are no longer a human I suppose that means I don't have to treat them as human if they don't believe they have to take part in the human social contract of, like, caring about the well-being of others. I mean, sure, that's fine. As long as they're okay with it happening to them, too. 